Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today to the nice smell of cooked pork on the air. And uh, we're gonna search around, see if we can find something here. Last episode we didn't learn our lesson that uh, fenced fields are dangerous, and uh, right now we're not gonna learn our lesson. Hopefully you are not gonna die, because I still haven't died, and we are like nine episodes in, so let's search around and see what happens. You take a moment to look around the base of the fire from the churned mud and footprints. It's clear there were several people here until not too long ago. Suddenly, from behind you, there is a snuffling sound. Something else has been attracted here by the smell. A snuffling sound. Let's draw the sword. And, of course, it's something terrible. You draw your sword just in time. A wolfhound slinks out of the darkness. Oh, boy. That was a good defense right there. I actually I didn't calculate that, but that was a good one. That was an instinctive move, anyway. The wolfhound creeps towards you, jaws dripping and fur shining wet. You raise your sword to defend yourself. Fearing the monster will spring. It bounds forward. You are shaken but unharmed. I don't think it's gonna... Let's go with... So, he's attacked that one. That means he's taken that out of his maximum, so he can only attack that one, he's not gonna be able to attack, he defends, damn it, damn it, you put all of your strength into a sweep of your blade, hoping to finish the creature in a stroke, the wolfhound drops back, it howls and whimpers, so he's gonna, I'm gonna attack again, I'm gonna go with full strength, I hope he doesn't defend, damn it, he defends again, this is really bad, this is really bad, you put all of your power into a sweep of your blade, but the wolfhound turns tail, it is dancing, preparing to pounce, okay, let's defend, yeah, okay, now the game is telling me something. The game is telling me something. The wolfhound charges for your blood. You react on instinct, dodging around a haystack for cover. The wolfhound scrapes at the ground as if digging its own grave. It's gonna go for a power attack again, I would I would say. But he went with a prow powerful one, right? Freaking hell! You turn your grip about for a manic, manic blow. The wolfhound runs quickly into the trees, but it has not gone for good. And a moment later, it creeps back into view. It's gonna go for a... Ah, that's what you get! Okay, okay. The wolfhound circles around you, snapping at the air. You wait, eyes fixed on the beast. It mo moans and howls. I'm gonna go with a power attack. I don't think it's gonna... It can... Holy crap, this guy's so defensive. You put all of your strength into a swing of your blade, but the wolfhound races away. As the wolfhound grows weaker, its snarls get madder. It's gonna go for a... Another defense? That's really weird. The wolfhound holds back, pawing at the soil. You hunch low, your sword ready. I hope he doesn't go for... A f for that. That was really bad. You swing high, hoping to sever the creature's neck, but the wolfhound is barreling forward with a with all hell's fury at its back. It sinks teeth into your leg. Blood streams from your arm and into the soil. It scrapes at the earth. And that's a that's a defense. That's a defense, isn't it? It is. It is. Right there. You try a swipe. The wolfhound drops low and your blade misses. It howls and whimpers. That's another defense right there. There it is, I'm learning, I'm learning, and now I can go full out, and I will attack, I will kill him. Not wanting to leave yourself open, you try a gentle stinging strike, but the wolfhound escapes the blow. The wolfhound is crawling now, it's fur thick with dried blood. And there we go. Whew, that was bad as hell. That was really bad, shameful indeed. Really, really, really bad against the otherwise easy opponent, but we're gonna continue with this. This is not good, I know, but we have healing potions and we're gonna take them. You put all of your power into into a sweep of your sword. The blade connects. As the wolfhound weakly opens its jaw to bite, you plunge your blade between its teeth and all the way down to the, its heart. The wolfhound howls and a gurgling blood-soaked sound and then it dies. <sighs> with the beast gone, the field falls quiet, but in the mud churned up by the beast, something is gling glinting. Let's investigate it. Digging into the mud, you unearth a curved shard of crystal. Curious, it can't be part of a jewel as about the as uh, it can't be part of a jewel as about the size and shape of your cupped palm. It is also lethally sharp, so you leave it here. You head back to the main road. What? You just leave leave it there? We went there to get nothing? Holy! Cr I can't believe we went there to get nothing. That was clearly a weapon or treasure or something. Or at least I didn't get myself killed. Or I don't even know. Let's drink a potion here. So he deals only three. That's really bad. Uh, we're gonna keep with that for right now. So let's go back. So we can go continue downhill. Let's go downhill. And hopefully things don't go downhill from here. Because they, they've been going downhill 
seriously fast. You continue down the road, heading back towards the wall, just visible in the distance. A few buildings appear on the right-hand side of the road. It is quiet, with no one about. This part of the city port is barely habited, so should be safe enough to pass through quickly. You pass by a large structure with its doors open wide. The smell of incense floats out from within. Let's look at the building. You, I don't like the, sound, the that smell, but maybe it's good. You stop and peer inside, but make out nothing but darkness. It seems to be a wide, unlit space. The low sound of chanting floats out onto the street. A woman's voice. I'm going in. You step into the gloomy shade of the building. The aroma of perfume and oil grows so thick that it begins to choke and to cough and choke, uh, announcing your presence to whoever is inside. The singing voice falls silent. Let's say who's there. You call out to the darkness. There is no reply, just a quiet sound, like a like a light footstep or the turning page of a book. Then there is voice. Greeting, men of Anerland. I see you are a bold type. Greetings, you answer. The voice laughs, a gentle, peeling sound, like a chime. I see you are searching for something, but you do not know what it is. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm looking for the North Gate, you reply. Then you have much distance to cover, the voice laughs again. There is a that noise again, like a palm snap slapping down. You see I see difficulty upon difficulty, she says. Well, can you help? Another slap. It is the sound of a card being turned from a deck. Tell me, she says, speak a word and I will tell you what I see. Gate. I see a closed door. I see a whispered I see a whispered secret. I see a trap of fire. Oh, fire I see an eye of burning red I see a whispered secret I see a small creature a pet on fire an eye of burning red a small creature closed door a whispered secret a trap of fire crown I see a long road I see a cloud of smoke I see the rain that brings the morning suddenly from the far end of the room a single candle flame ignites. A shade has been lifted from the lamp, revealing a woman in deep in a deep hood, seated at a star-shaped table. She is starting. She is staring at the cards laid out in front of her. Let's approach. She should be friendly. I hope. You step forward, and she looks up sharply, eyes wide with fear. Stay back! She cries. You seek the crown of kings. You intend to conquer the old world. N I seek to save it. You reply, nothing will save it. The damage is done. It would be better if the crown were dropped into the sea. Remember this. Who are you? You ask, stepping forward once more. The woman looks up with deep, with deep eyes. A long scar runs across her face from mouth to left ear. I see things, she says. Things that not all wish to hear. Well, I wish to hear. She nods. You are wise. She turns another card, a movement that is almost involuntary. Then she looks up at you. Remember this. The crown is not in Carre, but there are many who claim it is, and only one who is deceived. Only one truly believes. What? <clears throat> what? Only one who believes in what? That the crown is in Carre? But it can be deceived. There are many who claim it is, and only one who is deceived, so I'm not gonna... Thank you. You thank her for her mysterious warning, but her attention is lost once more, taken by the cracks in the flagstone's floor on which she sits. The streets will burn, she murmurs. The wolves must be turned around. You leave her to her dark vision. You step back out onto the path to continue your journey. Speaking of wolves, I think that wolf, that thing that we found up there was the wolf that we heard down there. So let's go down the road and uh, let's take a, ra oh, a left turn. Let's get ourselves killed. You stay on the main road, which heads down a slight slope to reach a small settlement of poor huts. As you pass these homes, ugly creatures gather to watch you in silence. A little further on, you a little further on, you come across a body lying face down in the gutter, a beggar, asleep, or some sort of creature in a dunker stupor. There is no need for me to do anything. Let's keep going. You ignore the body in the gutter. There's almost certainly nothing you can do to help, and it can't help you with your task, whereas one of the, well, these other creatures might. Uh, let's ask about the north. I'm going to get killed here. This is not good. Let's leave the streets. The, the body was a warning. You continue downhill until you find yourself back at the place where the road splits. Okay. Back at the first junction we are. Good. This is the first junction you saw this morning. You have spent half the day walking in circles, and soon it will be evening. You turn to face back up, uh, or face back up the hill once more. Heck yeah, let's go there, because we can't go back there, which is a shame, because I wanted to go there, but whatever. 
It's fine. I actually didn't want... I'm gonna get killed here. That's why I said before that I'm gonna get killed. You follow the road between homes and low hovels. You notice one of the huts here has recently burnt down. It is black. A black burning ruin. Let's go in there. You stick your nose through the charred door flap of the hut. Inside is a ruin of blackened cushions and burnt mattresses. In the very center of the ceiling is a ragged hole. There is no one here. Let's search the hut. You make a search of the hut, but the main thing you find is the glass pipe from a hookah. Uh, this is probably all that remains. It is worthless, so you leave it behind. Look under the mattresses. You turn over one of the mattresses to find one half of a black wooden mask. The other half is burned away, leaving the thing useless. It is nothing but charcoal now. Uh, let's take it. You put it into your pack. It will no doubt rub off all over your spell book, but never mind. Well, now you warn me. Time to go. At least the hut does not smell of death. Wh whoever was in here clearly ran away in time, but there is no sign of water either. No one tried to put off the f put out the fire. What happened to my spell book? What do you mean it rubs off over the spell book? I hope it's just... I hope it's not... It's not a thing. The book is closed. It should... I... Right? The book is closed. It shouldn't rub off on the pages. I... Uh, at least I think so. Let's go outside. Stepping out of the burnt hut into the fresh air, you catch the eye of a tall, muscular creature. He is smoking a long pipe and nods at you. Let's greet him. You stride over, not afraid to meet the creature's gaze. Good day. The creature nods to the burnt hut behind you. Friend of yours? It asks. No. So what? The creature takes a long, menacing puff of its pipe. Just digging around in there in case there is something worth having. It, having Is that it? Yeah, man, just curious. Curiosi curiosity killed the goblin, so they say. The creature, the creature replies. But I'll tell you what happened, seeing as you're, you're of the dangerous type. He puffs on his pipe. Fell behind on their rent, you see. Always forgetting to pay. The coals of his pipe flare for a moment. I don't believe that. How? What? What? You're gonna burn down the house if it fell? What? That makes no sense. What are you trying to say? Just friendly advice. When you owe someone, you owe them. That's business. And you burnt their shop down. Who says? The creature replies. I think they forgot to mind their fire. Same way they forgot to pay. He tips out his pipe and green grinds the ashes underfoot. Things are going to be difficult around here very soon, friend. Vic for first noble. With that, he stalks away down the streets, humming to himself. So Vic, apparently, huh, is another one. What is that one? Other items. Burnt wooden mask. Okay. Is that the mask? No, that's not. So I think the, the, the streets are going to burn because... Because of this. Lord Sansa is the first noble of, Sh of Carre. The inhabitants of Carre are greeting each other with the slogan, Vic for first noble. I don't know if they greeted me with that, but they definitely... Something happened. Uh, so now we can go up here and continue our adventure to the dangerous place that I really don't really... I can't really escape from this, so let's see what happens. You continue up the narrow road. It is packed either side with mud bricks... Uh, with mud brick hovels, but most are deserted. A few creatures pass by, heads turned down. They do not look at you. You pass a drinking fountain, dribbling water with a chipped stone bowl. Uh... Dribbling water into a chipped stone bowl. I'm gonna... Uh, this is bad. I'm gonna drink, though. You lean fo down by the fountain and cup your hand to drink. The water tastes cool, if horrible. Perhaps something is growing in it. Uh... Uh... The game has been punishing me a lot for all these excursions, except for that one right there. And that one right... Th I don't know. I don't know. Can I do anything? Of course not. Let's drink. Oh! You swallow boldly. If the fountain is still running on a busy street like this, it can't be too poisonous. In fact, the water seems quite fresh, and you swallow a few more mouthfuls, finding you had not realized how thirsty you were. The dust of the city streets and the baking heat has been tiring you out, but now you feel somewhat refreshed. You continue up the road. Oh! That was lovely! That was amazing, actually. That was perfect. Okay, let's go up here. And this part of town feels abandoned, like the drying strip of sand between, uh, left behind by a falling tide. Okay, let's walk on. A little further on, the road approaches the first stone building you have seen in, 
we have seen since the hut by the gates. It has windows uh, of glass and a wide yard inside is it's an even high wall. However, leaves here is wealthy and understandably cautious. They have, however, left a fine stallion only loosely tied out up outside. Uh, the house, the hut, the following, uh, the horse. I'm not gonna go for the horse here. I have learned my lesson from the first game. That's gonna be a bad recipe for disaster. And we have a map. Look at that. You step through the gate of the house into its wide front yard. It was once a magnific magnificent place with fish ponds, now stagnant, fountains, now cracked and dry, and small groups of quiet trees, now overgo overgrown and gnarled like whis whispering old men. The building itself has fared no better. One side has collapsed in on itself completely, and the other leans perilously to one side. Okay, so apparently it's all a ruin. But it does look like it has a bunch of stuff. Huh, looks pretty cool though. Uh, it looks really nice. It really does. Uh, so let's see, look in the trees. I just heard a dog. Look at the fountains. So they're cracked. I don't see any fountains over here. Approach the building. Let's look in the trees first. See what happens there. You pause to look around in the trees and, scru and shrubs. And that's what when you notice the two gleaming eyes staring back at you. A giant rat hangs upside from one of the branches watching you. I think it's going to attack me. But I'm going to draw my sword. It's not a... It's a bat. I see that, Did I say rat? I said rat, didn't I? You draw your sword quickly and engage the creature. Okay, I'm going to go for a attack of this magnitude and hope that it doesn't defend. And it doesn't, and I attack it. Oh, that's perfect. The bat's great wings buffet at your face. Buffet. At your face, of course. Making it hard to see. You slash out at the creature, hoping to cut off its wings as the bat comes for you with claws and gnashing teeth. The bat is flying erratically now. The giant, flap, uh, giant bat flaps its wings threateningly, clearly trying to frighten you. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, perfect. Oh no, it wasn't a kill. The giant bat can barely stay in the air. Uh, so there, another chance follows. You cleave the air with your sword. The giant bat tries to cover itself, but it is too slow. Let's go with that one. I hope it... Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. There it is. The creature is now afraid, pushing off a tree trunk, and you tr you thrust thirst forward. The bat falls to this to the ground, and the light in its eyes goes dark. Yeah. You turn to face the house once more. Okay, there was absolutely no need to do that, but at least we killed that guy, and uh, and he's not going to attack us again. Let's approach the house. The front door is as wide as two men and stands imposingly sealed. A small path winds around the back of the house. I always say winds, like in this particular thing. I think it's pronounced differently from winds, but I don't know. So we can go into the house, and we're probably going to need to cast a spell to open it. Or we go around, and we're probably going to be assailed by a dog or something like that, because I I keep hearing a dog somewhere around. It might, it might be just the, just the, the background noise for the city, but I'm going to go in here and cast a spell and see what happens. You stride up to this uh, up the steps to the door of the grand house. Let's um, try the door. You try the door, locked, of course. So if I knock. Nobody's gonna come because this is derelict unless let's just be a good neighbor here You walk up to the door and knock just to make sure no one answers a slate skitters off the roof and smashes itself on the ground to one side of you Oh, it's a good thing. I it didn't it didn't it has probably a warning for me not to break down the door Let's cast a spell here because I can't pick locks unfortunately and let's cast um, Dop or what yeah it was Dop? It was Dop. I, I still remember my spells but a locked door is of no consequence. Once you have woven your spell, the great oak door complains once and then gives way, swinging open to reveal a dark hallway beyond. Perfect. Oh, hopefully, anyway. You step inside the great stone house. A cold silence descends, quite different from the dusty heat outside. This place feels like it has not been lived in for decades. Although, judging by the lack of dust, it may not have been quite so long. Four floorboards creak underfoot. At the end of the hallway is a sealed door. Is that a chink of light just visible underneath the flame? The frame, I mean? Um, let's look at the light. The light beneath the door flickers, now bright, now faint, as though a figure paced back and forth, its shadow coming and going. But you hear no footsteps. What could it be? Probably some magic or terrible thing. 
Let's creep forwards. You make your way along the corridor. The walls on either side are lined with large portraits of dusty-looking men and sour-faced women who sneer at you as you pass. Let's look at the paintings. I mean, we're in no hurry, right? Uh, the figures in the paintings are all finely dressed, but they also have knife scars on their faces and nicks in their ears. These must be the Thief Kings of Carey, murky past. Carey's murky past. You pass a large metal coal scuttle sitting against the left-hand wall. Let's look in the scuttle. You look. You stop to look inside a scuttle, but the inside is blackened, and in the darkness it seems as though an infinity deep, in inf infinitely deep pit was contained inside. I think it's gonna be fine to put my hand inside. You are not afraid. You reach into the scuttle blind. The scuttle feels empty. Then your finger touches something sharp. So sharp, it stings. Let's search for the sharp thing. You feel around in the scuttle, searching for the object. Then you find it, earning another sharp prick. Keep feeling around. You keep feeling around and then have a clear sense that something is climbing up your arm to your wrist. What is it? In the darkness, you can see nothing, so you grope about with your other hand to try and work out what creature it is. But you feel a stinging pain in your hand, and a moment later, you feel the same biting sensation on your neck. That's when you realize there's something wrapped around your hand as well. A snake! Okay, let's kill it. You, you, you make to raise your sword and kill the beast, but it is wrapped itself tightly around your wrists, and I think I'm now gonna die. And now you cannot move your arms at all. You have had enough of this torture in the dark. You race out of the house and back into the sunshine. Holy crap! It was a snake inside a... Why? As you hit the light, the serpent hisses and rears back and drops it, it into the shadow. It must be a dark snake, a creature whose bite is luckily non-poisonous, just itchy. Let's return to the house. You take a moment to collect yourself, then you step back into the darkness of the corridor, determined not to leave the house and explored. Yeah, let's, let's do this thing. So he just took two health points. Two health points right there. Boy, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing good, this. I'm not doing good. Let's go in there. You reach the far end of the hall. It is only a short way from the entrance, but it all is now in shadow. The only light comes from the gap around the frame of the door in front of you. More darkness wells up to the right. You can just make out the first steps of a flight of stairs leading away upwards to the second level of the house. Uh, so we can... No, no, don't do anything. Don't do anything. I want to... Yeah. So I can enter the study, which I think I will do, and then I'll go upstairs. Let's do that. I hear... I hear a heartbeat. I heard that very, very clearly back then. I stop. I'm not sure if you guys heard that, but I did hear that. I wonder what is going on. You push open the door and enter a wide paneled room with a thick carpet. Let me see if the dolphin can... Oh, pray for healing. Right there. Perfect. Good. Good. Uh, so, a uh, paneled room with a thick carpet. It is a study of some kind. I love this sort of rooms. The source of the light under the doorframe becomes quickly apparent. A roaring fire burns in an enormous grate on the other side, of, on one side of the room. This is really bad. There's people in here. Why would there be... Let's look around first. You search around the room. The furniture is grand, carved and stained and inlaid with patterns of goblin bone. But there are no possessions to be seen. No ornaments, no jewels, no treasure and no sign of the owner. It is as if whoever lived here had moved out. Or more likely as though the place has been thoroughly robbed. With the door shut, you would expect this room to be swelteringly hot. But like the rest of the house, it is icy cold. Okay, so that is an illusion. I should cast a spell here. I should cast a spell here. I really should. Can you hear the heartbeat? I can hear it. Okay, you stay there. Yeah. I'm gonna go over to the fire. I'm not really sure if this is good, but hopefully it is. You go to the fire to warm your hands, only to find it emits no heat. Yes. It burns no fuel either. The enormous grate, large enough to roast a whole boar, is entirely empty of wood, ash, or coal. But the flames are nonetheless brilliant, as a high man, as high as a man. Let's... I... This is magic. But why is it burning? Why would they do this? Let's look into the fire. Peering deeper at the base of the fire, you see there is definitely nothing burning here. The uh, flames spring into life a finger's width above the grate. They are so bright you can make out nothing beyond, but it seems that the hearth does go back some distance. 
Oh, I lo I'm of course I'm going in. What do you think? I'm of course I'm going in. Stealing your courage, you duck your head and step into the grate. The flames surround you. They're crackles wh whispering into y the in, to, in, in your ears as though you stood in a pit of snakes. But you feel no heat. Your skin does not blister and your clothing does not ignite. You stand in the middle of the fire like some kind of demon and feel no ill effects at all. From here, you can see the hearth extends backwards much further than you might expect. Is it a tunnel or do you stand inside a trap? It's jaw about to spring shut that goes over there I thought this was outside but it might not be let's go forward you creep forward across the gate through the flames and beyond into a low stone alcove hidden by the fire the walls are made of solid slabs of stone and there is nothing here no treasure no secret doors on the far wall are a strange set of markings a series of long grooves like scratches radiating outwards from a small hole hmm what should I do? What what should I do? I don't know. Um, let's see if I can cast a spell here. Okay. I don't know. I got plenty of health. Uh, so sap. What is that for? Cause depression. What the hell is the pre? What do you mean depression? Depression on other creatures? I think so. It sap the spirit. The T doesn't work. The H. That's gonna be hot. Creates a fireball. That's probably not. How is find safe passage? Let's cast this one. You cast the spell and a calm, clear voice enters your mind, telling you there are two exits from this dead end. One is behind you and this way leads to the outside, another is to your left, but you cannot see it or how to open it. Okay. Let's feel the grooves in the far wall. You run your fingers through the grooves in the stone wall. They have been carved lightly and roughly with a dagger point rather than a chisel, perhaps, but the small hole at, the, at their center is much more cleanly formed. Okay, so this is an exit. Let's examine the small hole. You put one finger into the hole. Oh, don't do that! Put a dagger in! That's why you needed the dagger from before, but anyway. You cannot find the bottom of it, and it seems polished and smooth. It looks like a bolt hole you might find in the stonework of a fortress doorway, except for its position in the middle of a blank wall. So a keyhole, huh? You look through your pack for something to use, but you find nothing. Can I cast a lockpick here? Let's see. Let's cast the dop here. It's probably not gonna work though. Open locks and doors. It's probably not gonna work, but I'm gonna have to risk it. You cast the spell across across the left hand wall as guided by the voice that spoke in your mind. For a moment, nothing happens, and then, very slowly, the dop begin the stones begin to move. A passageway has opened to your left. And there we go, that was a conjunction. I think we had to cast that one before though, because it's like I don't think it was the far wall that we had to cast this. I think it was we just looked at that, and that's an I think so, yeah. Because if we had cast this on the on the keyhole right there it wouldn't do it I think we just did a very very good thing oh boy oh boy what awaits beyond that passageway well we're gonna find out next episode because for right now I'm Colonel RPG and this has been Sorcery I really hope you've enjoyed it and if you did go ahead and leave a comment like the video but above all thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next episode bye bye